Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for more Let's Play Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, Crash Bandicoot 1. And in the last episode, we got a lot of gems and completed two of the hardest levels in the game. And today, we are going to play Lights Out. I don't like this level. There are two levels like this, and they're both pretty bad. So let me explain the gimmick for this one. Aku Aku functions as a light. And this is where the problem begins. His light is limited. It will run out if you don't get another Aku Aku crate soon. Now, this doesn't sound bad on paper, especially considering that there's only 15 crates in this level, right? Well, here's the thing. Depth perception is key in these levels, and you have to constantly be moving if you want any chance of survival. And see here? I kind of screwed myself over because I waited. I got the crate early, and now I have to make these jumps and pray that Aku Aku does not go out. Another problem that I have with this is that Aku Aku's hit points only count as one. You don't get two and you don't get an invincibility, so if Aku Aku gets hit once, you're done. You are done. You are not making it through. You're in the dark and you're screwed. Now this is a colored gem route, so yes, you do have to play the level perfectly. But the thing is, it requires another colored gem to get the colored gem. So we're going to play through this level normally. And then we'll come back here later once we have the appropriate colored gem so that we can get the other colored gem. And as you can see there, I totally screwed up myself over there. It would have been one thing if I just took the hit like a normal person. But since I let Crash get hit, he fumbled and he fell. So... That's done. I'm not a fan of these levels at all. I do not find them very fun. And again, it's only for three crates. It's just frustrating. But Jaws of Darkness is here. This right here is my favorite level in this game. This level is so much fun. It's also the level with the most box gem boxes to get the box game. And this level also has the second and final of the Cortex bonus rounds. So we'll be getting our second and last secret door key. I love this level though. It's big, it's got a lot of secrets in it, it's fun to play, and it's just aesthetically very pleasing. But I'm actually going to miss one of the boxes that I forget about in this level. But don't worry, I'm going to obviously play through the level a second time, show off exactly where I missed the box and we'll get the gem, no worries there. But yeah, I wound up finishing the level my first time with 111 boxes out of 112, so I had to play the level again, which, if it was any other level, I'd probably be a little upset about that, but I do love this level, so I didn't really mind playing through it a second time. This is my favorite level in the game. I, I love this level. If there's any level I'd like to come back to and play in Crash Bandicoot 1, it's Jaws of Darkness. I don't really know what it is about this level that captivated me more than the other ones. It's just really fun to play, and I thought this level was actually very well thought out. There's a lot of great platforming in it, and you're kind of going all over the place. You face the camera in all sorts of different directions. Yeah, you want to carefully spin that crate so you can get the Dr. Cortex token. There is a part coming up where you're going to want to be careful because there is a enemy that if you spin it, it will collide with the TNT crate and it will blow up the Cortex token. So then you'll have to kill yourself and it's just, it's just not fun. But here's the blue gem route. Look at that. We can actually progress through a colored gem route on the first visit. A level I can complete 100% that has a gem route on my first run? Interesting. I'm sorry, let me dig into my, my Crash Chew embryo. Interesting! <laughs> I love embryo. He's such a great character. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of blue gem platforms. I don't get it though. There's only one blue gem, so I wanna I'm kind of confused as to how there's so many blue gem platforms it makes sense if it's like just one but there's like 20 here what happened game there's a life up there you might want to be quick and careful if you don't want to die <laughs> but yeah i just i don't know this level's just really something to me you know it's very very pleasing on my eyes and i'm just a very big fan of it aesthetically you just 
You go left, you go right, you go towards the camera, you go away from the camera. It's just all over the place. It's huge, and I love it. I don't know how Crash's nose didn't get smashed. Pancakes! And I'm totally going to flub up one of these jumps, aren't I? I feel like I did. I can't remember. No, I didn't. Might be a later part. But, okay. This is the part I was talking about. There is a snake coming up in that hole. Don't spin it. Jump on it. Because if it hits that TNT crate, you won't be able to spin into that question block and get the Dr. Cortex token. There's also another little secret trail over here. Just walk along it and you're good to go. Just keep moving because those do sink, obviously. But here we are, the second and final Dr. Cortex bonus round, giving us our next key. And I did fail this bonus challenge a few times. This is actually a really hard one. The timing is key. There's a lot of TNT involved, and of course it has a radius so it can blow up the crates that you need to bounce on if you're not careful. So remember, just be as careful as you can and just like, you know, Try to hold your jumps out as long as you can, and I freaked out there. I thought for sure I was boned. I don't know what happened there, but I somehow made it. But there we go. We got the second and final of the secret keys from Dr. Cortex. So anyways, now we just gotta get to the end of the level, and of course I'm gonna have to play through it again to get the, the one crate that I'm gonna wind up missing. But that's okay. We're pretty close to the end. As you can see, the Taunus bonus round is actually just up ahead. And of course, so is the end of the level. So yeah, you want 89 to show up on there before you enter the Taunus bonus round, not 88. I learned that the hard way. But again, I don't mind having to play this level again. It's a very fun level. We're getting really close to the end of the game too, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're on part 7 and there, there's only one part left after this before we are done with Crash Bandicoot. And it feels great. It feels very great. I'm happy to be done with this game because of the three Crash games, this is my least favorite. I don't think Crash 1's a bad game. It's dated though. Even in the PS4 remaster, it's got a few dated elements to it that I'm not a fan of, but hey, Crash 2 and Crash 3 are on the horizon and they are so, so much better. But yeah, you can see here, I I realized. What you want to do is jump on this iron crate up here, and there's the crate. So now I have the gem. So we're good to go. And with that, we are at the end of this level, and we have to say goodbye to these types of level themes, which is a shame, because I really like these cave theme levels. But hey, we got a gem. We're up to 20. Only six more to go. And it feels... So good. But anyways. Castle Machinery. We'll go over there a little later because now we gotta go to Fumbling in the Dark. The other dark themed level that I'm not a fan of. I really don't like this level. Also, this is a really dickish move here. These jumps are not fun. Yeah, don't miss those crates. There are 18 boxes in this one, and I'd argue that this level is even more difficult to play through because it's so stingy on the checkpoints. And I almost didn't make that jump, and I was gonna get really mad. Now, thankfully, you don't have to actually perfect this level. But the checkpoints are so stingy that you might as well just start the whole level over because it doesn't want to help you out because the game is evil. Fumbling in the Dark is a very appropriate name for this level. Because you will fumble. And it will leave you in the dark. Mm -mm -mm. I cannot stand this level sometimes. And there I go, dying. And I got the checkpoint, thank goodness. Like I said, this is just... I don't like these levels. I think that these were an afterthought. But it's weird because Crash 2 and Crash 3 would go on to have levels in the dark themed style, but they handled them so much better. 
so much better than this game did. These jumps just... They get to you. It's just not fun. It's its not fair, either. It's, it's a very... Risk situation on the platforming. I don't like it very much. But, you know, there's only two levels like this, so... Thank goodness, but... Again, that's a problem. There's two. That means I have to fumble twice. I also hate that when you collide with an enemy, it automatically goes into an Aku Aku crate. You get the Aku Aku. Because remember, those precious seconds that you get with Aku Aku are a blessing. And if you are so much as premature on it, you might have just screwed yourself over. Like right here, where I couldn't see. And I, I screwed up because I couldn't see. So then I, I did it right, and... This time, I was able to see where I was going. Of course, it was still getting a little frightening. I honestly thought I was going to get cut there and lose Aku Aku, completely ruining my visibility. But we're done. This level's over. So that's good. We are so close to completion, it is great. But we've gotten both of the secret levels done now, so that's fantastic. Alright, so, now we're going to go on to Castle Machinery, and this is the last main level I'm going to play as Coco, because from here on out, it's really going to be Crash's business from this point on. But, this is the Green Gem route, and if you take this, you go to heaven. And if you take that Green Gem, it'll take you right to the exit, so you can basically skip the entire level. But why would you want to do that if you're trying to actually get, you know, all the crates? And of course, this is the second and final inside 2D factory styled level, and I quite like this level a lot. It's very fun to play. Just like Heavy Machinery, I do like this one. And you know, it's, it's kind of a relief that we're getting close to the end. There's really not a whole lot left to do in this game, and I feel very satisfied that I've managed to complete this game twice on this version in the span of just two days. I mean, I literally did my practice run on one day, right? And then I, the very next day, I binged it again for the actual recording. Uh, the PlayStation 1 game version, I played that a while back, so, you know, I was just kind of getting into preparation to familiarize myself with Crash 1 again, and I really wanted to try and 100% it again. It was just, it was just a nightmare. It was a nasty disaster. I didn't want to do it ever again. But... We don't have to worry about that, because we are free, guys. We are free. We are, we are almost done, and I, I couldn't feel better about this. So thankful to be almost done. Crash 1 is a good game. It's dated, and it's definitely not in my top 5 Crash games. I don't even know if I would put it in the top 10 Crash games, if I'm being perfectly honest here. I'd rather play the other two in the trilogy. But Crash 1 is a pretty dang good game. For what it's worth, I do enjoy the game. I just don't think it's the best. People say that the original trilogy is the best Crash has ever been. I'd say 2 is definitely one of those games that I can agree with that on. 3 is so-so mixed for me. Mostly a good one. Mostly a good one. I've got my gripes with that. We'll get to that at one point. But for me, Crash 1 is just the weakest of the three, and it just, it kind of bogs down the trilogy. But you know, every game has their first. And like Spyro, with its lack of a hover, or a, a better charge, and every first game always struggles, you know? Like, you have to give them some credit. It's the first game, they're trying to figure out what works, and then they always listen to feedback and they always try to better themselves in the sequel. And I'd say that in the case of Crash 2, they definitely better themselves. Crash 2 is miles better than Crash 1. And I am very excited for that one. Because yes, ladies and gentlemen, I will be covering all three games in the Insane Trilogy. I posted a tweet poll on Twitter asking what you all want me to do. If you just want me to do the first game, and then continue on with other games, and then come back to 2 and 3, or if you want me to just do all three. And you all said you want me to do all three, so... Um, probably not going to jump right into 2 right off the bat, if I'm being perfectly frank here. Uh, I would like to finish Spyro. I would like to get Spyro together. Uh, because 
I took a week off from Spyro in order to get this Crash Let's Play together for y'all. So I'll go, I'll go back to C Spyro after I get this one uploaded. And then probably after Spyro I'll do Crash 2. But ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Join me in the finale next time as we grab the last of the gems, finish the last levels, and end this game. I'll see you guys then.